Okay, moving on to the next team we'll be breaking down in the Big East, and this is the team that I have finishing in ninth, and that would be Dave Laytow and his DePaul Blue Demons. And last year, it was a crazy season for DePaul because to start the season, they actually played pretty well. And you guys know DePaul hasn't really been good in a long time. And then all of a sudden, when everyone was saying just how talented this team was, they really fizzled down the stretch, went 3-15 and in Big East Conference play, and we know the rest. And this is going to be a very interesting season, I think, for DePaul, because I think this year there's a chance that their roster is more talented than their roster last year, even without Paul Reed. So we're going to get into it with everything DePaul. And this is a really, really deep roster to start. That's the first thing that comes to mind when I look at this group. They have a lot of really good players. But once again, what does that mean when you consider the fact that DePaul was very similarly built last year? We were saying the same thing, that DePaul has no winning pedigree, but they have all the talent in the world. So what exactly does that mean? Last year, during the non-conference portion of the season, DePaul was able to win at Iowa, at Minnesota, and at home against Texas Tech. And to be honest, these are games that usually DePaul does not win. And Paul Reed, he decides to turn pro. And that's obviously crushing, but it's not unexpected when you consider the fact that DePaul was not very good last year and he was the best player on the team. And it's a blow to DePaul's hopes to at least be competitive. I would think that would be the best way to describe it. Paul Reed was a second team all Big East selection last year. He averaged a double-double and really impacted the game on both ends of the floor. Without Paul Reed on the court, Last season, DePaul was one of the worst teams in the country. And not only in the Big East, the country. That's how bad they were. So I'm going to be fascinated to see if they could make up some ground without Paul Reed this season. And as poor as DePaul shot the ball last season, and DePaul really was not able to shoot the three ball well last year at all, and I think if they want to be successful this year, that's going to be something they're really going to have to improve on. But DePaul was one of the worst teams shooting the ball last year, but at least Paul Reed's efforts on the glass made up for it. Now, with him gone, your shooting is really going to have to improve. And when you look at this team, right off the bat, the good thing, I think, for DePaul is they have two really experienced players that have played big-time minutes in the Big East before for this DePaul team. And I think Charlie Moore at guard and Jalen Butts at forward is one of the better one-two punches in the Big East. So it's not like Dave Leto doesn't have talent. I'm telling you, Jalen Butts is an underrated player, and Charlie Moore really did become a star last year. He really wasn't anything at Cal or at Kansas, but he finally found himself a home at DePaul last year and established himself as one of the best players in the Big East Conference last year. So I think Moore and Butts at the top, that's a really good place to start. Also, they bring in some transfers. Javon Freeman Liberty. Now, officially, he hasn't gotten a waiver yet, but everyone around the DePaul program does think he will be ready to go. All projections I've seen have said that he's going to be in DePaul starting five, and this is a guy that earned a spot on the Missouri Valley's all-conference first team last year, transferring from Valpo. He's a two-time all-defensive team member of the Missouri Conference as well, and also, DePaul has an NBA kid in Romeo Weems. This is a guy that I think will play in the league, super athletic, has really good size, and I think has a lot of breakout potential. He, to a lot of people's minds, is the key to DePaul's success this season. He's a former top 75 recruit. He was an all Big East freshman team member last year. And the thing about Romeo Weems last year was like, he was a very low usage player, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But he was able to shoot the ball a little bit and provide the Blue Demons with some scoring out off the bounce. And I think in order for DePaul to be successful this season, they're going to need to see more and more of it. Now, even though I do believe that as a whole, this DePaul team is more talented than last year's DePaul's team. The roster is super patched together with an unproven coach and a culture of losing. And DePaul lost Paul Reed, Jalen Coleman, Lance, who transferred, two of their better players. And even with those two guys last year, DePaul finished last in the Big East in Ken Palm and did not even come close to making the NCAA tournament if it would have occurred. So the question here now is, how do you get over that? Dave Latow has improved the talent level at this DePaul program. Now, the question is, can we expect 
bigger improvement in terms of wins and results? And the first answer that's going to come to most people's minds is no, just based on last year and the talent that this DePaul team had. They used to be two easy wins, and now they're pretty talented, but last year they were two easy wins as well. And when you look at this team now, I'm not saying this team is not talented, but just because DePaul gets better, that doesn't mean, for, uh, just because DePaul gets better from a talent perspective, that doesn't mean that the rest of the Big East didn't get better as well. And ultimately, I think when you look at this DePaul team, that's going to be the problem that's been bugging them for years to come. And I don't know how they were this bad after beating some of the teams on the road like they did last year. Like Iowa folks last year was a legitimate top 15 team and DePaul went on the road during the non-conference play and beat them. Super impressive win, but unfortunately, Dave Laytow was not able to turn that into anything for this DePaul team. I do think this is the best DePaul roster Dave Laytow has had since he's been the head coach, and he does deserve a little bit of credit for doing a good job filling needs in the transfer portal. He grabs an extra rebounder in Paul Polycap, the transfer from Manhattan. He averaged six and a half rebounds per game at Manhattan last season. He'll provide DePaul with some good depth. And the thing about DePaul also here is that they need to shoot the ball better. They only shot 28% in conference play last year. And overall, this offense, uh, this offense during conference play was the worst in the Big East by a significant margin. So what does Dave Laytow do in addition to bringing in Polycap and Freeman Liberty? He also brings in Brian Patrick, the transfer from Fort Wayne. He's a redshirt sophomore. He averaged 11 points per game for them last season, three and a half rebounds per game, one assist per game. He's a pretty solid shooter, and I think he'll be able to contribute for this DePaul team right away. And if I'm a DePaul fan, I just want to see him get on the floor, him provide some consistent offense. Jalen coleman Lenz was not really able to shoot the ball well last season, and I feel like last year they weren't really surrounding Charlie Moore at the point guard position with enough shooting. Now they bring in also Ray Salnave, the transfer from Monmouth. He was a guy that averaged 14.5 points per game last year. They bring in Freeman Liberty, a guy that averaged 19 points. And now even though two of them were at the mid-major level, you do have three guys in this projected to Paul starting five that averaged over 14 and a half points per game last year, even though once again, two of them were at the mid-major level. DePaul also last year, this is another big thing. They didn't really have a bench besides Nick Ongenda, who's a big man. He came into his own. I think he's going to get a little more time last year. If he could get on the floor, I think that's going to be another key thing for this DePaul team if they want to succeed. Dave Laytow right away is really going to have to figure out roles for each guy off the bench. And I do think a starting five of Moore, Salnave, Freeman Liberty, Weems, and Butts with Polycap, a rebounder off the bench, Darius Hall as a energy guy off the bench, and Brian Patrick as a shooter off the bench, and maybe Nick Ongenda gets some time as well as just an extra big man and an extra body, then this DePaul team maybe could be okay, but... With all the talent and all the pieces, uh, Dave Laytow, the more pressure is on him in order to get the job done. I also do think DePaul can take some pressure off guys like Charlie Moore by playing guys like Ray Salnave and Freeman Liberty on defense. They could both really shoot. And last year, Jalen coleman Lenz didn't really shoot as well. DePaul, once again, was not able to shoot the ball at all last year. When I look at this starting five, they do have a good switchable lineup when you play guys like Romeo Weems and Jalen Butts at the 4-5. So maybe on the defensive side of the ball, they should be able to be a little bit. And for me, when I look at this team this year, I think they're really going to have to set roles. And even if they do, I'm not sure if it's enough to make the NCAA tournament, but kind of similar to St. John's, at the very least, if you're a DePaul fan, I think you're going to want to make the NC the NIT, excuse me, because even though the culture is not great around the program right now, I don't really know if I love the coach. At the same time, there is plenty of talent on this team, and this is probably the most talented DePaul roster I've seen since I've started watching college basketball. Now, what does that mean? I don't know, because historically, once again, it's not like the Blue Demons have been able to win anything anyway, especially last year when they really did show flashes in the non-conference portion of the season, but still were not able to get the job done. So defense is going to have to be the calling card for this DePaul team, because scoring will likely still be a struggle, even with the addition of guys like Freeman Liberty and Salnave, because they've only done it at the mid-major level and not really the high-major level yet. The Demons should be a force in the perimeter defensive game. They should rack up 
up turnovers, and there's reason to believe that the defense led by guys like Pauly Cap, Butts, Weems, and the depth of that could get the job done for DePaul. I'm rooting for success this season, but it's kind of hard for me to see making the NCAA tournament and having a successful season just based on the history and recent trajectory of their program.